Sacks here from the Investor Channel coming to you guys with another great, awesome, and magnificent video. Um, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, comment, share button, all the other great stuff. I appreciate all you guys' support. And as always, if you got comments, drop them below or email me at info at royalfinancials.com. But the best way to do it is send me an email, not an email, but to send me a comment below and I get it taken care of. But as always, I don't have a lot of time and I definitely know you guys don't have a lot of time, so we're going to jump straight into it. So as you guys can already see in the description box, or it'll probably come across the screen right about now, is that this is going to be about private banking. What do you know about private banking? What if you haven't heard from it? I'm going to give you an example of what we do as our regular banking, and then I'm going to get into private banking, and then we're going to compare and contrast at the end. So first, we're going to get into regular banking, like retail banking, which most of us are very familiar with. So come on in, check it out. So retail banking, I'm not putting a big word in front of it. Just say a regular bank. Right, I'm gonna put here RB retail bank or regular bank, nothing fancy about it. Right, let's say if you wanted to purchase a car, this is you, you want to go out here and purchase your car. What does most of us do? We go up to a bank, we request, Hey, let's say if you uh, saved up five thousand dollars, that's what we're going to put in this situation. You saved up five thousand dollars out of your savings, and you went to a bank and you say, Hey. This is you. You go over to the bank. That's a B. My handwriting is horrible. Let you guys know that now. You go to the bank and you say, hey, let me borrow 15000 Let me borrow 15000 Or let's say, let's do for, for simply, simply, ah, simplistic purposes. You borrow 20000 Right? You went to the bank and you say, hey, let me borrow 20000 The bank says, okay, there, Mr. Bob. That's the name I'm giving. Mr. Bob, you qualify. Here is your twenty thousand. So you know Bob, he's all happy now. He got his twenty thousand dollars. But they say, hey, guess what, Mr. Bob? With this twenty thousand dollars, just for simplicity version of purposes, we're going to charge you interest. That's how the bank makes their money, right? We're going to give you twenty thousand dollars that you asked for. Twenty thousand dollars that you asked for plus ten percent. You know. Let's do 10%. 10%. $20,000. That's a K. $20,000 plus the 10%, you know, that you got to pay them back. And 10% on $20,000 is $22,000, right? Well, that's what you're going to end up paying them back at the end of the day. You know, 10% is $2,000, 2000 plus the interest. You're going to end up paying them back over five years. So you get the money, you know, you take the $5,000 that you already had saved up. You got the $20,000 from the bank. You go on down here to the car dealership or whatever the case may be. And you go get the car that you wanted. You get the dealership, right? So you hand over $25,000 to the car dealership. $5,000 from your saving that you saved up. Another $20,000 from the bank. And boom, now you got $25,000. You give it to the dealership. The dealership in turn. Dealership in turn gives you a car. You know. The end, right? He gives you a car. So let's walk it back up. You went to the bank, you bought you had your own five thousand dollars, you borrowed twenty thousand from the bank. The bank gives you twenty thousand dollars with a ten percent interest rate. You take your twenty five thousand dollars, you go to the car dealership, the car dealership gives you your car. Now we're gonna fast forward this like we have happen all the time. That card that you paid twenty five thousand dollars for, now let's say it's worth ten thousand. Let's say this over five years. Now that you got your car, over the last, over the next five years, you pay twenty thousand dollars. No, you're going to pay twenty two thousand. You're going to end up paying twenty two thousand dollars back to the bank. Why is that? Because remember, they let you hold twenty thousand dollars plus ten percent. You know, interest you got to pay back. So over the next five years or whatnot, you're going to end up paying $22,000 back to the bank. That's fine, cool, and dandy, right? This is you. But you're not feeling too happy right now because you know that car that you purchased, I'm going to put a C here for the car, it's probably only worth $10,000, right? So, which is cool, which is fine. You paid $22,000 back to the bank, you got your car. Five years later, if you wanted to sell it, this is how much money you would get. So, plus, you're out of your $5,000 that you invested 
not invested, but you added on along to it. So if you at the end of the day, five years later, five years later, someone put five years later, you just got a car now that you probably can sell for ten thousand dollars, but you originally paid twenty twenty five thousand dollars for it. Remember, remember when you went to the car dealership, you gave them twenty five thousand. So, but anyway, now that is regular traditional banking, nothing crazy about it. This is the illustration that we're going to come back to. Now we're going to jump into private banking. Come on over here. Now we're over here, we're going to discuss private banking. So uh, let's get straight into it. We're going to put PB. That's not peanut butter either. That's what private banking. All right, cool. So anyway, let's say you have Mr. Bob here again. He decides, hey, I want to get that $20,000 car or whatever. So instead of going to a bank, he goes over here to his pile of money. This could be an IUL. This could be an annuity. This could be some time 401ks. Money that they placed in for the last 10, 20, 30 years. And over the last 10, 20, 30 years, let's say all the money that he placed in there while he was working in his 20s, his 30s, and 40s, and maybe 50s or whatnot, he ended up putting $50,000 into this. That's the principle. That's the money that he's put into it. But we just want Let's say on the other side, he's had 50% in growth. This is tax deferred. All the money that comes in here is tax deferred, right? So he puts the money into here, and let's say he got $50,000. This is the principal, right? This is the principal that's growing up over time. This is CV. We're going to put CV, cash value. That's the principal. So he goes in. He says, hey, I want to get me a car. Instead of me going to a regular bank, I'm going to use my own money to purchase my car. So he goes to his policy. His policy says, hey, we're going to give you the $50,000 with a 10% interest rate as well, right? We're going to put I here. The insurance company gives him out of, out of his policy. They give him 10, they give him uh, they give him $20,000, right? They give him $20,000 plus, you know, they charge him a 10% interest rate to do this. So he gets charged 10% to borrow his own money. So boom, he gets the $10,000. He walks on down here. He goes to a car dealership just like he did the first time. Boom. He goes down to the car dealership. He gives them the $20,000. That D stands for dealership. The dealership gives him the car. He's all happy. He has his car, right? He has his car. And then let's say five years from now, his car is only worth $10,000. That's how much his car is worth. Now, initially, you know, he paid $20,000 for it. Now, when he goes to pay back his $20,000 that he borrowed, he's going to pay because he borrowed $20,000 from his own insurance, right? A policy or whatever. He's going to pay himself. Remember, that's his policy. He's paying himself back $20,000. Because remember, that's what he got from him. Then he got to pay that 10% interest, right? Which is $2,000. 2000 of that, he's going to pay another $2,000 in interest. In interest. So how much money did he, and his car is worth $10,000. So is he out of $20,000? No, he just paid himself back. Also, on top of that, how much money did he really pay? Yes, he paid $2,000 to borrow his own money, but that's it. Now he has a car that is valued at $10,000. So over this time, right? Over the last five years, he paid himself back his money. He paid the insurance company 2% of the interest, right? But guess what? The whole time, that whole five years, his money can still be making money because he borrowed from himself, right? So he borrowed from himself. He paid himself back. Now we're going to get into net worth at the end of the day. At the end of the day, the only money that he put out was $2,000. You guys get where I get that from? 
Because that 20000 he borrowed from himself. He's put his money back. The only money that he came out of, this is the only money that he's down. But guess what? Five years later, he has a $10,000 car. If you subtract that 2000 from up here, so that's the only money he came out of. He can't count this money because it's back in his account. He borrowed it from himself, right? Now, if he wants to go sell this car five years later, yeah, it's only worth 10000 now. So he is still has a positive network in this situation of $8,000. How did this man buy a car five years later and make money? This is considered the concept of private banking. Right? So now let's go over here and let's look at what the, re the regular retail person does. Here in the retail person, how much money did he come out of? He had $5,000 that he saved up. That's gone now. Right? Then he, um, let me come over here and get a little bit closer. So the thing about it is now he has placed out, uh, over this time, he borrowed $20,000. He didn't pay himself back. He paid the bank back. You see? He paid the bank back with interest. So he is, out of his pocket, has came $22,000 over the five years. Right? His car now is only worth $10,000. That's the only value he has right now. Now, with that being said, you are in a situation to where, hey, he placed out $22,000. His car is only worth 10000 You do the math. He's at a negative 22. I got that negative 22 because he paid back the 20000 plus the 10%. You know, now he's at a negative 12000 Along the way, how much money did he make? He didn't make anything because his money wasn't nowhere where it was growing. This is the concept of 90% of the Americans over here in private banking, what the wealthy does. So over the last five years, he has now a negative 12. And if I really wanted to do it, because you know he started with 5,000 over here. If I added that into the equation, if I added that into the equation, man, you know I'll jittery here. He would be at a negative 17. A negative over the last five years. Prince, how do you come up with that? How does that make sense? When he paid his money back, he did he paid the bank back twenty-two thousand dollars. He already had it, he took his savings. This is what most of us do. He paid back the bank $22,000. Five years later, he has a car that's worth $10,000. In this situation here, how much money do you put out? $22,000 back to the bank. $22,000 minus the car's value that he has up today, he's at a negative 12. If you want to throw in the money that he started with, he paid $25,000 for his car. It could be going down to a negative seven. But I'm not going to throw this in here. I'm not going to throw the $5,000 that he put in there because the second example didn't do it, it wouldn't be fair. So just fair version, how he's at a negative 12. But let's go back over here. This person paid $20,000 for their car. They're at a plus. The only difference was he didn't pay the bank back. He paid himself back. The only thing he came out of his pocket was for the insurance company. But he still has a $10,000 car that he can sell and still subtract the interest out that he put out. And he put $8,000. Now, granted, when you see this, it's not going to happen overnight. This person here in this situation that we are not going to like, oh, I have fifty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000 overnight. This is the concept of, hey, where are you putting your money today? Because some of you just got a good job or where you're starting your career. Where are you putting your money today that can build up, that you can eventually do something like this with? This is a concept that the wealthy has been using for years and years and years. And throughout my experience and time and interviews and all the other great stuff you've seen me do from Wall Street to Tokyo Stock Exchange, Meeting these millionaires and billionaires from around the world, this is what I learned, and I'm sharing it with you. But uh, if you guys got any questions about this, drop a comment below. Thank you guys for watching. Till next video, you guys already know what to do. Peace, be safe, and I'm out. Yeah.